Hello and welcome to the 2014 World Rally Championship, day two of Rally Monte Carlo, the opening round of the season, which features 13 events, including a welcome return for Rally Poland, Wales Rally GB wrapping things up once again. The two opening days of Rally Monte Carlo have been based around Gap in the Haute Alp, day three, and the rally will head south, taking in two passes over the infamous Col de Torini and a service in Monte Carlo itself. Well, the action got underway yesterday in typical Monte conditions. A challenging mix of dry tarmac, ice and snow in the early morning darkness. Mads Osberg showing just how difficult the conditions were. A lucky escape for the Norwegian. Mixed conditions, mixed fortunes for young Welshman Elvin Evans. Struggling early on in the dark and those slippery conditions. Left on the 40. On a brighter note, he did at least have two winter tyres in the boot and he put them to good effect in stage three with a second fastest stage time, putting the Welshman up in fifth. One driver who wouldn't make it through the opening stage though, Belgian Thierry Neuville. Runner-up in last season's championship, he was off the road and out of the running on his first competitive stage in the new Hyundai i20. Yeah, we have to retire right there, so it's, uh, it's obviously not what we wanted, not what uh, the job we had to do. And there was more bad news for the new Hyundai team after stage four. Just after moving into an impressive third place, Spaniard Danny Sordo ground to a halt on the road section. He too was out and with no super rally here in Monte, Hyundai's rally was already over. All eyes were on world champion Sebastian Auger, born locally in Gap, but a wrong tyre choice by the BW man caught out on the unexpectedly snowy roads, and he was well off the pace in the opening loop. The surprise of the first morning, Robert Kubica, the former Formula One star, stunning the rally elite to win the opening two stages. But he too would be caught out by the surprise snowfall in stage three, losing a minute and a half combination of slick tyres and fresh snow simply do not mix. Chris Meek, like Elvin Evans, carried a pair of winter tyres in the boot, which he duly bolted on to help him blast into second place, the position he held overnight. But the surprise packet on day one, local privateer Brian Bouffier. The Frenchman has pedigree on these treacherous roads, winning at Monte in a non-WRC round three years ago. Another to opt for a pair of winter tyres and producing a stunning drive. So, Bouffier, the surprise leader after the opening day, followed by Meek and Kubica. World champion Ogier, fourth, 47 seconds behind, but don't write him off. Evans going well in sixth, Hervenen less happy in eighth. Well, before the crews go anywhere, they first need to make that critical choice of selecting which tyres to use. Today looking to be slightly simpler than yesterday with the rain being the biggest concern, but this being Monte Carlo, the conditions here notoriously unpredictable. For the rally leader, Bouffier, secrecy is the word. Brian Bouffier, that was a long conversation with Malcolm Wilson. What have you decided for day two of the famous Monte Carlo rally? Oh, we were not talking about the car. We were just joking. <laughs> so. yeah. No, we were talking about the, the day, you know, to trying to keep uh, going and uh, also with the tire choice because it's not uh, so so easy. Because, you know, most of the drivers now are choosing uh, slick tires, but it can quickly change with the weather conditions. So, uh, so that's why it's a bit uh, difficult. Choice made. Here's what faces the crews today. Five stages approaching almost 180 competitive kilometers. The first four run in daylight, the last in the dark. This rally doesn't get any easier. Time now to join our commentator. It's hello to John Desbra. Hello again, everybody. Stage seven. And depending on how your Monte Carlo is going, this one is either very good or very bad news. Lovely to see you. Let me explain. If your car's bang on the money and your confidence is high, then this monster is where you can go for it. But if the opposite's true, it can't finish quickly enough. The former is the case for world champion Sebastian Ogier. On his way to winning this opening stage by a massive 35.6 seconds. Flat left. 
Welshman Elvin Evans has been very sensible on this Monte Carlo. That's what his team boss, Malcolm Wilson, told us last night. His reward is sixth place. But if ever there was a place to be really, really sensible, then this was it. On these icy patches, we can hardly see them. Elvin can't see too much more, and he needs to be sensible and much more. Fearless Robert Kubica is having no trouble building up speed on this, the longest stage on the event this year. But that, that speed stuff can be lethal when his car hits ice. And all that built-up speed can be difficult to get rid of if he breaks late on the ice. In third place overnight, this is now turning into a real challenge. But just for a second, let's leave him and now return to Ogier, the world champion, slower than Kabitzi yesterday. And Ogier's motto now is attack, but not at any cost. He's on the same tyres as Kabitza, the super slick Michelin, so he's got no advantage there. So the way to outdo him is to use his better experience and listen carefully to co-driver Julian Ingracia. On the black top, it's crazy. It's like on ice, so for sure the car is very nervous on this section, and sometimes we have some big slide. But we are here. <laughs> it's more of a level playing field today, with everybody on the same tyre choice. But is the novelty beginning to wear off for Robert Kubica? Let's put the clocks up and try and find out where he's suffering in comparison to Ogier. And he is suffering already. Ogier's time in green, Kubica in red. Ogier flew through here in one-tenth of a second over 29 minutes. And we are watching here Robert Kubica drop a place down to fourth. <laughs> Right behind that little dogfight, Chris Meek, whose career in this sport was accelerated by the approval of the 1964 Monte Carlo winner, Paddy Hopkirk, who's also from Northern Ireland. It took Hopkirk days just to get here back then. Meek's time against Kubica and Ogier is going to be clocked in tenths of seconds. Early flat, six right. Ogier was eight and a half seconds behind but look at this. Meek has also been eclipsed by the mighty Sebastian Ogier. Chris Meek drops from second to third place. Chris Ogier is on a mega push, but you've taken good time out of Kubica. So that's not a bad thing. Uh, four seconds over 50 k's is not a lot, to be honest. Um, incredibly slippery on the sharp blacktop. It's like black ice. Uh, okay, you can see it, but in the faster sections, it can catch you out. It only takes one square meter patch of shiny and it can put you off the road. So, yeah, the tires are working really well everywhere else, but on this blacktop, oh, yeah, it's, uh, it's tricky. And Ogier's mega push will just be reaching this man, Brian Bouffier, rally leader. The last man to tackle this marathon stage. Seems strange to some here that this former French rally champion is only a test driver at Hyundai and entered here as a privateer. And his principal sponsor is one of France's biggest poultry suppliers. You can, you can see where I'm going here. because after everything that he's done this weekend, he's still got everybody in a flap. Oh, mind you, even he's having trouble with this slippy tarmac that Chris Meek was talking about. But Brian Bouffier's rally lead is down to 35.6 seconds. Thanks, John. So the surprise overnight leader is still that. Bouffier, the man to catch, but Sebastian Auger, the big man on the move today. Up from fourth to second, he has Bouffier firmly in his sights.
VW teammate Lapala also on the way up, overtaking Evans for sixth. We are up and running, but the fun and games have only just begun. Plenty of off-road antics coming up next. We'll explain what's happened here in just a moment. Rally Monte Carlo, day two, the first part of which unfolds in and around Rally HQ in Gap, the capital of the Haute Alpe region of France. Gap, incidentally, the birthplace of WRC world champion Sebastien Ogier, and was voted the most popular major sporting city in France last year. Rally Monte Carlo moves this afternoon, the crews heading 250 kilometers south to the Principality, arguably the most famous motorsport venue in the world. OK, back to the day to action now with John. So Sebastian Ogier is now up to second place. And here, on stage eight, there's a sting right in the tail. You'll see why in 22.68 kilometres. And it is going to give this man, Norway's Matt Osberg, a real scare. Sixth on the road this morning, a later start than yesterday. But since that early alarm, Matt has found it difficult breaking into the event's top four. Everything is nice and well behaved until that is the flying finish and the stop board come into view. Flat out, crossing the line, and then this happens. Wow! 